Math 287, Cuesta College, I'm Joe Vasta, and we are doing section 1.9, exact differential equations. So, before we get started in telling you what an exact differential equation is, um, I'm going to go give you a problem from Calculus 3. Find the total differential. Now, if you hadn't had multivariable calculus, this isn't so bad. Um, what the total differential, what the total differential is, it's dz. So dz equals, and what it's going to be is you take the partial derivative of this with respect to x. Now, if you've never done partial derivatives, you treat y as a constant. So what you end up getting is 2x plus 2y minus 4. And of course, we're going to multiply this by dx. And then we're going to add to this the partial derivative with respect to y. So x is a constant, so the partial with respect to y, that's 0. And the negative 4x is 0. So you're going to get... 2x, and then you, you say dy. So this right here is called the total differential. And um, the total differential, if you want, let's go ahead, we're done with this problem. If you want to call this guy f of xy, then the total differential, if you, you want a formula for this, is the partial with respect to x multiplied by e, dx plus the partial of f with respect to y multiplied by dy. Okay, so this kind of seems weird that we would be doing this. We're not solving a differential equation now. And um, let's go ahead and tell you kind of what this means. dz is approximately delta z, and then I'm going to say in parentheses, when close. So what does this mean? You might have remembered in calculus, you had those flying carpets in calculus 3 and you wanted to know what the tangent plane to that point was. So the tangent plane maybe, you know, it goes in all directions and it looks like that. And so what this is, when you are at the point on the magic carpet and you move away a little, this is, this is measuring the change of the height. So this, this is on the actual curve. And this is the change of height on the tangent plane at that point. So this represents the change of height on the tangent plane. So when you're close to that point, the tangent plane does a good job at approximating the function values around that point. Now when you're far from that point, then this is not true anymore. Okay, we'll continue now. So what we want to do is we want to suppose a lot of airplanes flying outside today. Want to suppose that d z equals zero. Okay, so we're going to suppose that dz equals 0. And so I'm going to replace that z with what it is. So this is d. So my original z was x squared plus 2xy minus 4x equals 0. So I've kind of got the derivative there. What I want to do on both sides is is integrate and so that's going to kind of get rid of that derivative there so I'm going to have 
x squared plus 2xy minus 4x, that's going to equal c. Okay, so I know this is kind of weird. We, we start off with suppose dz equals 0, and then we have d, that's z equals 0, and I integrate both sides, and I have, or another way of saying, instead of saying integrating both sides, what can you do, what has the derivative of 0? It's when that thing is a constant. That's the only time the derivative will be 0, is when this thing here is a constant. And so I'm going to box this thing. And I'm actually going to put an arrow toward this, and I'm going to say this is a solution. Now, have we answered the question, find the total differentials? Yes, we have. There's the answer. But then I'm doing this weird stuff here. And I'm like, this looks like a solution. It has a C in it. Maybe a solution to a differential equation. Well, what differential equation would that be? That differential equation would be this guy right here. So it would be, so remember how we said dz is 0. I'll replace 0 there and I'll have 2x plus 2y minus 4 dx plus 2x dy. And because we said we're going to let dz equal 0, we're going to say this thing is 0. This guy right here is a first order exact differential equation. So that's crazy um, how we're kind of going about this. And maybe, maybe I could be doing it in this a better way. But uh, you get what you pay for. I mean, it's free on YouTube. So... But let's, let's explain this a little bit more. Um, we're going to refer to this first part that's in front of the dx. We're going to call that multivariable function p. And we're going to call this 2x right here, we're going to call that q. And so let's make a diagram of what just happened. We started off with a function f. We called it z at the beginning. And... If you take the derivative, so that arrow will denote the derivative, with respect to x, we ended up getting p. And that's what we did. That's how we got that. Now, if we took the derivative with respect to y, we ended up getting q. q being just the 2x. So let me go ahead and clarify this even more with this red circle here. There's p. There's q. And so when you get a differential equation that looks like this, p dx plus q dy equals 0, the solution is going to be some function, which I'll co call the potential function. It will be this, this original thing that I had equals a constant. That will always be the case when you have this first order exact differential equation. Now, all, are all the first order differential equations exact? No, but sometimes when they are, then to solve a differential equation like this, all we would have to do was find, you know, notice how we were here, was find the original function f and set it equal to what? C. So in your book, they're going to start off with problems. They're going to give you problems and they're going to say, is this differential equation exact. Now how can you check that? I'm going to show you something kind of clever. If you go ahead and zap p with the y derivative gun, well, let's see what happens when we do that. If you zap them with the y derivative gun, I'm going to end up getting, well that's a constant, that's a 2, and that's a constant, so I'm just going to end up getting 2. Now if I zap q with the x derivative gun, let's do that. So this is 2x. What's the derivative of that with respect to x? It is 2. So that's how you can check to see if a differential equation is exact 
by taking the partial of this part with respect to y, the partial of this part, which we call q, with respect to x. And if you get the same thing, then we can say, ah, this thing is exact. How do we solve this? We're, we're still going to get into that. This may remind you of vector fields in a multivariable calculus class. So let's go ahead and define an exact differential equation. And I know this is kind of weird. We'll kind of leave this list this here as we do the definition. The definition of an exact differential equation. P x y dx, it's kind of what we have there, plus q x y dy equals zero is an exact differential equation if p y, it's kind of like what we did there, equals q x. And those are derivatives if you have not had a multivariable calculus class. So that is what we're doing. Now what is this diagram? It almost looks like the one I have up there. You know, you have the p and the q, and you're going to have a p y and a q x, and this thing will be exact when you go to do this you have equality there okay so at this point you might still be feeling a little confused like whoa what am I gonna have to do in my homework and I think um, maybe the first part it could be better you know after doing some problems you can go back and listen to what I said on that first sheet but now in chapter one we have four kinds of differential equations. So let's go ahead and use our Venn diagram with four sets. Here's a four set Venn diagram. First order differential equations, separable, linear, Euler homogeneous, and now we have exact. And of course there's going to be some first order differential equations that fall outside those, and then you would need other methods. Okay, maybe approximate methods, numerical methods. But that's the picture that I, I like. It's not going to be in your book. And so what do you really have to do for the test and for the homework? Because that's, that's what the minimalists are asking. They're like, I don't care about math. Well, they're going to give you a differential equation that looks like this. And they're going to ask you if it's exact. So, you know, it will be exact <coughs> if PY equals QX. Now the rationale behind this is there's a theorem called Clairaut's theorem, which says this right here, fxy equals fyx. And isn't that kind of what you're doing? So to find out if it's exact, we want to see if this is the case. If, if we can find py equals qx, then there is a potential function that exists. Okay. Let's go ahead and do this problem here. So I'm going to go ahead and circle this. And this guy right here is, we'll call him P because that's what we've been doing. And we can just put that there. And then this guy right here is Q. Okay, so, um, Go ahead and compute the derivative with respect to y on the first one. The derivative with respect to y on the first one is negative 2y. Now we're going to go ahead and compute the derivative with respect to x on this guy. We end up getting y. So py does not equal qx. Is it an exact differential equation? No. So um, it is a first order differential equation and you can find out that this one is actually, I believe it's um, an Euler homogeneous one. Okay, so we already know how to solve this using a different method. Now, for those of you who've had Calculus 3, you really, in Calculus 3, you had these vector fields, P, Q, and this is in R2, and in Calculus 3, you were asked to check 
to see if your vector field was a conservative vector field. Remember, I don't know if you remember this. So this is pretty much the same question as this right here. So if you haven't seen vector fields, then forget about this. Conservative vector field, and then maybe P would be x squared minus y squared, and Q would be xy, and then you would say, oh, no, it's not. But if it was a conservative vector field, then it could be generated by something called a potential function. Okay, and we'll get to that. Let's go ahead and do problem number two. Problem number two. The question asks, is this an exact differential equation? Okay, so here is P. Here is Q. So let's label them. P, Q. Okay, so we'll take the derivative of P with respect to Y. That is going to equal 2X. And the derivative of Q with respect to X, that is 2X. So we have PY equals QX, which means this is a yes. This differential equation is exact. Now here's the deal. That means we can draw the diagram we were drawing in the other one. So there's P and Q. We went ahead and took the Y derivative there, and we got 2X. And we took the X derivative there and got the same thing, which means there exists a function F such that you take its X derivative, you get P, and you take its y derivative, you get q. Okay. And in if this was a calculus 3 question, and they said, is it a conservative vector field, and it was p comma q within the triangular brackets, you would say, yes, it is. And you would try to find the potential function, which is this guy right here, which would be the gradient of f. Or, no, sorry, the gradient of f would be p comma q would be the vector field. So I kind of said that incorrectly, but I'm not editing these videos. So, oh, well, you get, you get what you get here. So look at this. The next, um, the next problem is exactly what we had here. And they ask us to solve this differential equation. So what I'm going to do, so we have everything on one, one page is I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this diagram here. So the arrow means I'm taking the derivative. And maybe I should have had it drawn up already. There's 2x right there. Okay, so we, we verify that. Okay, so what are they asking us to do here? They're asking us to solve this differential equation. So to solve this differential equation, you are finding this function here. Now, how do I find this function? Go ahead and do the same thing that I did on the other one. This is P. This is Q. Well, I'm going to try to get a glimpse of what F can look like. If I'm taking the derivative to go from F to P, the derivative with respect to X, then to go from P back to F, I'm going to take the antiderivative. So I'm going to go like this. Integral P with respect to x. And so what this gives me, so I'm integrating this with respect to x, it gives me a 3x plus y is a constant here. So it's going to be x squared over 2. So it's going to be the 2's will cancel. You'll have x squared y plus a c1. But that c1 can be a function of y. Okay. So we could go C1 of Y. Now we're going to show you how to do this problem a lot faster than what I'm doing here. Now, to get another glimpse of this F, I can take Q 
and take the antiderivative with respect to y. So that's what I'm going to do here. The antiderivative with respect to y. And this will give me another glimpse of this guy. So it's kind of like a crime scene. I'm trying to solve this. Who murdered this person? We're trying to figure out who this guy is. And we're going to do it. Watch this. We're going to take the derivative of this with respect to y. And what do we have? We have x squared y minus y. And then, of course, there's going to be a plus c2, which can have some x's in it, because remember here, x is our constant. So what do you see in both of these antiderivatives? You see an x squared y. And anything that has both x's and y's in it in terms of a term, you'll see the identical thing in both of them, because this guy should be the same guy. So when we write our potential function f, f will have an x squared y in it. Okay, you're not going to put it twice because it's, it's the same thing. And then f will also have a 3x. And um, maybe this minus y is included in there, so I'll go minus y. This 3x is definitely included in there. And then, of course, with all things, you know, you have that plus c. Okay, so that's what f is. Now, remember back to our first equation here. We said here's the exact differential equation. It's the potential function set equal to c, which gives us the solution. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the potential function. And I'm going to not put the c there. I'm going to say this is set equal to c. There's our solution. Now, I'll, hopefully you can get to the point where when you see an exact differential equation, you can just write the solution down. Now, how could you do that? You can just integrate with respect to x. And I, the dx kind of reminds you that maybe you can do that. And so I would write a 3x down, which I have here. I'd write an x squared y. So I'd write that as the next term. And then I would go take out my y deriv um, antiderivative gun and then say, oh, look, I have an x squared y, which I wouldn't write again. And then take the antiderivative of that with respect to y, I'd, ha I'd have a negative y. And the, see, that's what I have. So I should be able to just jump from this to the answer. Now, I know you're probably getting sick of me showing you Venn diagrams, but some of you are very visual. So I'm going to say the solution, all the terms of the solution are in this Venn diagram. So this circle right here is going to represent the integral P dx, that's this one right here, um, terms. And then this circle right here is going to re represent the integral q dy terms. And we're done with the problem, by the way. So what are the ones that both of these guys shared? Well, it would be an x squared y. And then there were some other terms in here, like a3x, and some other terms in here, like a negative y. Okay, so maybe that, that helps you, and maybe that helps you so you won't go ahead and put two of those when we do another problem. Um, let's go and do the next problem. Okay, so this next problem hopefully won't be so bad. Oh, if you were in a multivariable calculus class, there's your potential function there. And so the good thing about the potential function is we can use it to find the work along a path in that vector field. Whatever that means, if you've, ne if you've not had that, then don't worry about that. Okay, so here it goes. Number four, they're asking us to solve. And we're assuming what they give us is an exact differential equation. So we have that right there, and that right there. Okay, so that's what we're focusing on. This is P, this is Q. 
So in our diagram, not that we need to draw a diagram each time, here's P, here's Q. And there is a potential function that created those. Take the derivative of f, you, you get p. You take the derivative of f, you get q, but it depends what you're taking it with respect to. So let's see if we can do this problem. I am now going to take the, the antiderivative of this, so I'm going backwards, so I'm going up. That's the antiderivative or the integral of this with respect to x. Okay, and you can kind of see the dx there, which helps jog your memory on that. So the first term that I get, I'll put arrows, but I don't usually do arrows when I do this problem, would be, this is just a constant. You know, if you're taking the antiderivative with respect to x, so it's going to be x e to the 2y, which you should expect to see coming from this, okay, because it has both x's and y's in it. The next one that I'm going to do is I'm doing the antiderivative of this with respect to x. So if you like, I'll go ahead and write this down here, the antiderivative of negative y cosine xy with respect to x. So I was going to do it in my head. I have to take the cosine, now the, the constant is y. So the, I would do a u substitution and let u equal xy. But if you take the derivative of that xy with respect to x, you get a y. So the constant is right out there and that's going to be the thing that disappears. Okay, because I'm doing the u substitution or reverse chain rule and so the antiderivative of cosine is the sine. There's that negative out there, so this will be negative sine xy. And so that's what happens when you zap this with your x antiderivative gun. You get negative sine xy. Okay, I'm done with this. Now I'm going to go ahead and zap these guys with my antiderivative y gun. Okay, the antiderivative of this with respect to y, 2x is a constant, you actually would do the reverse chain rule or a u substitution. There's already a 2 there that's going to disappear. So when you zap this with your integral gun, or your y integral gun, you're going to end up getting an x e to the 2y. So you'll end up getting that right there, which we're not going to write again because, because of the way this works there. Now I'm going to zap this with the y integral gun. x is a constant, so I'll do a u substitution or eyeball this. The derivative of xy with respect to y is an x, which will disappear, and then when I zap this with the integral gun, the integral of cosine is the sine. There's a negative, and I'll have negative sine xy, which is that one right there. So we're not surprised. Now, had we got something that had an x and y in it, and it didn't come from over here, then we would probably be a little suspicious on whether this was exact. Now, I'm going to go hit this with the y antiderivative gun, and I'm going to get in, end up getting a y squared. So this is plus y squared. That right there is function f. Okay, that's the potential function, and to solve this differential equation, set it equal to c. Okay, whoops, I kind of, I can't box my answers. Okay, so that's the deal. We can, now we could actually check this out and take the derivative of this with respect to x to see if we get that. And you can see that you would because you would have an e to the 2y and then you'd have a negative, you're doing the chain rule, y is a constant, y cosine xy and then that's zero. And if you took the derivative of this with respect to y, you'd end up doing a little chain rule here. You'd have a 2xe to the 2y, which you have here, and then you'd have a x is constant, so you'd have a negative x cosine xy, which is that, and the derivative with respect to y is 2y, which you have there. And so that's, that's what we did. I just kind of visually checked, visually checked to see if that was correct. So that is 
the deal with these. You can even go back. Now, I know I keep coming back to this. You can come back to this first problem. And remember how I told you this was an exact differential equation. You could just solve this really quickly just by zapping this with the x integral done. This would give you an x squared, which we have there, plus 2xy, which is that, and then you have minus 4x, which is that. And then you can zap this with the y integral done, which gives you a um, 2xy, which you have there, and this 2xy is the term that is has x's and y's, and you got from zapping both of those. So I just went ahead and verbally walked my way from this differential equation to this answer. The other thing that I want to do, I guess, I know I keep switching back and forth. You don't have to do this. I'll draw a Venn diagram and I'll say, um, we'll just say all terms of the potential function, and then this right here is the um, integral p dx x terms. I really should have been a little careful on my other diagram. I should have said the x terms. And then this right here is the integral q dy y terms. And so you can, not that you have to do this, we're done with this problem, but you, you have the x e to the 2y, and then you have negative sine x y, which happened to live in there. And then you have the y squared term. Um, before I PDF the other one, I'll go ahead and insert where it says x terms there and y terms. Okay, one last thing that I wanna say is, Suppose you want it to ask, you know, they ask you, is this an exact differential equation? And you have to then take the partial derivatives. And you're getting a little confused on when you take the um, partial antiderivatives or the partial derivatives. The thing is, suppose you said, oh, I think this guy is exact. So we'll just assume that it is exact. So if you were assuming that a thing, a differential equation is exact and you go to hit this guy with a, um, wait, this one was a yes. We solved this one. <sighs> okay. So we'll just, this one was where we got no. Okay. So we're just assume this, assume it's exact. It is exact. Well, that means when you go to um, zap this with the x antiderivative gun, you'd end up getting x cubed over 3 minus xy squared. Okay, so that's by doing this guy right here with the integrating this with respect to x. Now I'm going to integrate this with respect to y, and what do I end up getting? I end up getting an x y squared over 2. This right here should have been in this answer right here and it wasn't. So if you didn't want to do the py and qx when they ask you is it exact and you just try to solve it, you would end up getting some sort of contradiction. You would end up getting an x y term here that and an x y term here that were not consistent and that's what we have here. So the last thing that we want to say about everything we've done is in your homework, I think there's some 1.12 in your homework where they just mix these four kinds of differential equations. I would like you to skip the homework on that. So skip the homework on 1.12. And that concludes section 1.9 First order exact differential equations, our next lecture will take us um, to chapter 8. You guys have a good day.